Hello everybody. Before I say anything else, can I just say to you a very happy Easter. This is another surreal experience for me because I am now on sabbatical and hopefully as you are watching this I am away in Yorkshire so there's another first for me to be preaching in Ipswich while 200 miles away. It's quite important that I'm back in Yorkshire because it takes me back to an Easter a long long time ago back in the early 1960s. We'd recently got a new minister, Mr Constantine. I remember him so well and one Easter Sunday um, we had received not that many Easter eggs, we didn't get as many in those days as we do now, but my mum and dad had given my brother and I each a box of half a dozen Macintoshes, small toffee filled eggs. And my brother suddenly started for some reason talking about Mr Constantine and um, realising that Mr and Mrs Constantine didn't have any children, um, he suddenly made the link that perhaps there would be no Easter eggs in their house because of that. And so he declared that he was going to give one of his Easter eggs to Mr Constantine. And not to be outdone, I decided I would give mine to Mrs Constantine. And so we each went to church that Easter Sunday morning with a small Easter egg each and gave our gifts to them. And thus started a tradition. And for over 20 years, we gave two small Easter eggs to Mr and Mrs Constantine. They, they left us a few years later um, and moved to Ilkley, which was still close enough for us to visit each Easter. And we did. Every Easter Saturday, we would drive across to Ilkley and deliver said eggs. And then when they retired, they retired to Skipton, which was another nice little drive for us. And so it went on until the year that Mr Constantine died. I try to remember, but I guess it was the late 80s. And the tradition ended. The, the reason for me sharing that little story with you is, I, I think sometimes... We do things out of a sense of tradition. I guess that by the 1980s, when both my brother and I were in our 20s and were, were both married, um, I, I guess that we'd sort of forgotten what the whole thing was about in the beginning. It had just become a part of a tradition. And we just got on with it. We didn't think about it. We didn't think of the implications. We didn't advance it or do anything about it. It was just what we did every Easter. And I think if we're not careful, we can treat events like Easter in that sort of sense. And I've always thought we, we start in church by saying those wonderful words... Alleluia, Christ is risen. And the congregation responds, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we get on with a great celebration. But it wasn't like that at the first Easter. And that's why I think this reading from John is important. Easter day starts with Mary going to the tomb. Why is she going to the tomb? Because she's mourning the loss of somebody she has loved. And I suppose today she might be taking flowers. I don't know what she expected to do when she got to the tomb, but I guess that she just wanted to be close. And, and for people today, we still do that when somebody we love dies we somehow want to be near to them. We want to mark that occasion. So it doesn't start with great rejoicing. 
he starts with a single woman lost in grief. But then the story progresses very, very quickly. Because, of course, when she gets to the tomb, the stone has been rolled away. And the next stage is one of utter confusion. What is going on? And her immediate response is that somebody's broken into the tomb and stolen the body. The ultimate insult. And so she does all that she can do. She runs to find Peter and John. And they in turn run back to the tomb. They want to know what's going on. The immediate thought isn't, well, he said he was going to rise from the dead. This is the third day, so hallelujah, Christ is risen. Their thought was, what is happening here? Who has taken his body? What's going on? This isn't what we expected it to be. And they run to the tomb. I love that image. John, the younger, more sprightly, gets there first, a bit timid, possibly only a late teenager at the time, and he doesn't want to run into a tomb. This is a tomb, remember? And so he stands, and he waits, and he, he glances in, but that's as far as he gets. But not Peter. Peter's always the impulsive type. And he comes lumbering up, an older man, and he arrives at the tomb. There's no waiting for Peter. He gets stuck straight in, and he goes into the tomb. And it's almost as though with Peter in there, John also is permitted to go in. And he goes in, and he looks at what he sees. And what he sees is not the body of Christ. It's not the wrappings just thrown randomly because somebody's stolen the body. But they're lying as though Jesus has evaporated through them. And he looks and he believes. But the key thing here is he doesn't understand. And, and I think quite often that's the problem with the Easter message. We don't understand how this has happened. And people over generations have taxed themselves thinking, well, how did Jesus conquer death? But you see, I don't think that is important. The fact is, John sees and he believes. He doesn't understand, but faith is enough for him. And then I love the way the story returns to Mary. And it may well be that Peter and John have now gone. And Mary's left alone. And she's crying. She has lost this man that she loves. She's racked with grief. And she's kneeling there, lost in that grief, when this man comes up to her. And it may well be that she doesn't recognise him because she's looking through tear-filled eyes. It may well be that he's standing with the sun behind him and it's just a silhouette. And she doesn't recognise him. All she wants to know is where her Jesus is. And when he says her name, suddenly she knows. She is the first to witness the risen Christ, a woman. A woman who maybe, as you read the scriptures, you find is of somewhat questionable 
conduct, she is the first to witness the risen Christ. And what she then does is she goes to the others and she tells them. And in doing so, she becomes the first Christian apostle. And at this point, when now we know the truth, we can say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And the people reply, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.